hi beloved hope you're well and that you're having a good day i wanted to come on and share some scripture some beautiful scripture that i know is going to bless you and i am reading from matthew 5 where jesus recounts the blessings and um so i'm in matthew 5 if you want to read with me it says first of all let's pray lord i just pray that your word will go into good soil and that you would water those seeds lord help us to shut out all distractions right now and to focus on your word and to read and pray and to come into agreement together lord god as we come together now lord god everybody on this on this platform and those that are watching this now lord um i pray lord god that you would um help them right now to focus and i pray you would touch them and minister to their uh, ministers to their hearts in a way they need to be touched right now um concerning their lives the areas that they, they're struggling in the challenges they're facing lord right now i pray in jesus name thank you lord thank you jesus have your way lord have your way up father in jesus name we pray amen amen okay so it says when jesus saw the crowds he went on the mountain and when he was seated his disciples came to him then he began to teach them saying blessed spiritually prosperous happy to be admired are the poor in spirit those devoid of spiritual arrogance those who regard themselves as insignificant for theirs is the kingdom of heaven both now and forever amen blessed forgiven refreshed by god's grace are those who mourn over their sins and repent for they will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted hallelujah amen blessed inwardly peaceful spiritually secure worthy of respect are the gentle the kind-hearted the sweet-spirited the self-controlled for they will inherit the earth amen blessed joyful nourished by god's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be completely satisfied. Glory to God. They will be completely satisfied. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 7. Blessed, content, sheltered by God's promises, are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh. Blessed, anticipating God's presence, spiritually mature, are the pure in heart. Those with integrity, moral courage and godly character, for they will see God. Blessed, spiritually calm with life joy, in God's favour are the makers and maintainers of peace for they will express his character and be called the sons of god hallelujah amen amen blessed comforted by inner peace and god's love are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right for theirs is the kingdom of heaven both now and forever verse 11 blessed morally courageous and spiritually alive with life joy in god's goodness are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of your association with me be glad and exceedingly joyful for your reward in heaven 
is great, absolutely inexhaustible. For in, in this same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Verse 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, purpose, how can it be made salty? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out, walked on by people, when the walkways are wet and slippery. You are the light of Christ to the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone with a lamp. Nor does anyone with a lamp. And put it under a basket. But on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds and moral excellence and recognise and honour and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Do not think that I came to do away with or undo the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfil. For I assure you and most solemnly say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of the pen will pass from the law until all things which it foreshadows are accomplished. So whoever breaks one of the least important of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least important in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches them, he will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness or brightness, moral essence is more than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it is said to the men of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be guilty before the court. But I say to you, that everyone who continues to be angry with his brother, or harbours malice against him, shall be guilty before the court. And whoever speaks contemptuously, insultingly to his brother, you... Uh, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. And whoever says fool shall be in danger of the fiery, of the fiery hell. So if you are presenting your offering at the altar and while you are there, you remember that your brother has something such as a grievance or legitimate complaint against you. Leave your offering there at the altar and go first. Make peace with your brother and then come and present your offering. Come to terms quickly at the earliest opportunity with your opponent at with your opponent at law while you are with him on the way to court so that your opportunity so, so that your opponent does not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you are thrown in, into prison i assure you and most solemnly say to you you will not come out until you have paid the last cent <clears throat> you have heard that it is said that you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who so much as looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye makes you stumble and leads you to sin, 
tear it out and throw it away. That is, remove yourself from the source of temptation. That is, remove yourself from the source of temptation. If it is, for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for the whole body to be thrown into hell. If your right hand makes you stumble and leads you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. That is, remove yourself from the source of temptation. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for you than for the whole body to go into hell. So it's talking about here, you instead, it's not talking about actually cutting or taking out your eye or cutting off your hand. It's talking about removing, just to clarify, it's talking about you removing yourself from the source of temptation that you no longer are weakened. You, you are no longer in that weakness you're no longer around that temptation so remove yourself from the source of temptation so it's not actually talking about actually removing your eye or actually removing your hand it's saying okay which means remove yourself from the source of that temptation just so you can clarify that so that you're no longer tempted and then i'll continue it says verse 31 it has also been said whoever divorces his wife to give her a certificate of divorce. It has also been said, whoever divorces his wife, to give her a certificate of divorce. Um, but I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except on the grounds of sexual immorality, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who has been divorced commits adultery. So except on the grounds of sexual immorality. Uh, morality uh, causes her to commit adultery and whoever marries another woman who and whoever marries a woman who has been divorced commits adultery. So verse thirty three again you have heard that it is said to the men of old you shall not make false vows but you shall fulfill your vows to the Lord as a religious duty. But I say to you, do not make an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you make an oath by your head, for you are not able to make a single hair white or black. Verse 37. But let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no. Affirm yes or no. Anything more than that comes from the evil one. So let your answer be yes or no. As the Lord is saying here, anything more than that is, it comes from the evil side. Verse 38 says, You have heard that it is said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Punishment that fits the offence. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person who insults you or violates your rights. But whoever slaps you, on the right cheek, turn the other toward him also. Simply ignore the insignificant insults. Sim so I'm in the um, Amplified Version that gives the extended meaning. So <clears throat> I'll read the meaning of what it's saying. It says, simply, so you're turning the other cheek, says, which means simply ignore insignificant insults or trivial losses and do not bother to retaliate maintain your dignity and your self-respect maintain your dignity your self-respect verse 40 if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt let him have your coat also 
for the Lord repays the offender. So the Lord um, repays, not us when we're done wrong, it's the Lord that repays. So whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks of you and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it is said you shall love your neighbour, fellow man, and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love, that is, unselfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So that you may show yourselves to be the children of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on those who are evil and on those who are good and makes the rain fall on the righteous, those who are morally upright and the, up and the unrighteous, the unrepentant, those who oppose him. For if you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do that. If you greet only your brothers wishing them God's blessing and peace, what more than others are you doing? Do not even the Gentiles who do not know the Lord do that? You therefore will be perfect growing into spiritual maturity both in mind and character actively integrating God, godly values into your daily life. I'll read that again, verse 48, and it's the last verse, and it says, You therefore, you therefore, will be perfect, growing into spiritual maturity, both in mind and character, actively integrating godly values so actively integrating godly values into your daily life, into your daily life, as you, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I really felt that in my spirit. So beautiful. So this recounting here that the Lord is doing, that the Lord is speaking of, where it's saying, blessed be those who are the peacemakers, blessed be those who are meek, oh. Blessed be those who are, um, what else? Blessed be those, let me get one more. Blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired are the poor in spirit. That's another one. Those devoid of spiritual arrogance, those who regard themselves as insignificant for theirs is the kingdom of heaven both now and forever and forever isn't it amazing how you know the lord how we as people you know see and do things and think isn't the way the lord does things it's actually the complete opposite to to uh you know the lord's ways are higher than our ways and his thinking is higher than our thinking and that scripture comes to mind where, um, just now actually, where Samuel is told to go and anoint the sons of Jesse. And he's looking at the oldest, I think it was the oldest one was Judah, was it Judah or Reuben, uh, one of the oldest. And he's, um, he says to the Lord, surely this one, look he's tall, he's handsome. He looks the part, and the Lord did not choose him. And then he goes along the line, and he's continuing to move down the line until the, there's no more sons left to 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 uh, see to move along the line with, because they've all run out, <laughs> apart from David, who's in the field, <laughs> full of hay, with all the probably dirty and all ruffled, <laughs> with fluff on him from the sheep and looking all deraggled and then he comes in <laughs> David 
<laughs> the king and he actually says we're not gonna sit down we're not gonna sit down until this boy comes in because this is the one this is the one this is the king you know the one that who was um discounted the one who wasn't even in the line <laughs> the one who wasn't even thought of it wasn't even there but because of the lord praise the lord he comes in they wait for david and david receives the oil from god through samuel and he receives that divine appointment that he stepped into and so can you imagine david comes in they don't sit down until he comes in and then this like man of stature and uh, so mightily blessed by God, Samuel pours, his name was renowned, he pours the oil on David and the oil, can you imagine, begins to pour down upon David's face. Probably, you know, from, if it's on his head, all the way down, his face, his eyes maybe, his whole, the top of his head. Can you imagine what he was thinking? Can you imagine what he was thinking? You know, probably thinking, me? I'm just a shepherd boy, what can I do? Me, I'm the least of my brothers. How, how can I, I, how can this be? You know, shocked. Can you imagine the shock? Can you imagine how shocked David must have been that he would have known when he came in that what was going on, all of his brothers were, 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 um, weren't were considered. But he came in, Jesse said, this one is one of my sons who, is out, who was out in the field. Because he said, didn't he? Jesse told him, this is the, uh, I've got one more son in the field. And he said, we're not going to sit down until he comes in. Until he comes in, we're not going to sit down. And so then he comes in and David finds himself in this mighty encounter, life-changing event. A life-changing event that where David shifted from being in the field, from a, from a, from a position um, where he wasn't um, a low position, that... To, to a, a position of prominence as a king, anointed by a, a man who, you know, is well known throughout Israel, a prophet of God, who says, I'm here to anoint the king, and I'm here on the Lord's command. Sorry, I'm trying to hold this camera. And um, so, you know, this is the encounter that David finds himself in. And... You know, and there we have it. You know that example. This one, this one thing came into my mind as I was, as I was just sharing that. Um, and now I forgot what I was actually. Um, what made me think of that? Oh, that was it. Um, when I was uh, talking about Matthew, it was in Matthew five verse three. That was it. The poor in spirit, those who are devoid of. Um, who regard themselves as insignificant. That's why I spoke about that. So, yes, I'm trying to shift this camera. Yeah. So, yes, this, you know, uh, encounter that David had that changed his whole life. He went from one position to another. And even then, we know that it took time for him to receive that position because it was the, there was such a... Um, a launch of an attack against David's position, his anointing and what he was going to do in how the Lord was going to use him. And so um, he received a lot of opposition from his own family, from even one of the mentors that lo he loved that would try to, um, we know the story, don't we? So yes, praise God, there we have it. 
you know uh, so I hope you're feeling encouraged with this word today and that you know it reminds you of you know the blessedness you know when we carry out these these uh, commands from the Lord and put into practice these things you know of being meek and being um, regarding ourselves as insignificant and being humble and um, the peacemakers and you know as we do and carry out these beatitudes this recounting of blessings from the Lord we are blessed because we are in alignment with God and I just wanted to share this today this was on my heart today to share so praise the Lord thank you Lord for your word Thank you, Lord, for your word, Abba Father. Lord, I pray, Lord, we all go wrong, Lord, and we never, we all, well, none of us are perfect, Lord. We all fall short of the glory of God. So I want to pray, Lord, for um, for all of us now who would connect to this prayer with me now to come before you, Lord, and to ask for mercy and to repent. For the things that we do, Lord, that are in our hearts that we don't even know are there. And yesterday, Lord, I was uh, from the um, what I was talking about yesterday, how uh, to peel that you would peel and that you would circumcise our hearts from pride, from unforgiveness, Lord. That you would circumcise our hearts, Lord, by your Holy Spirit from all the things evil that's there in our hearts, the selfishness, that's what I'm talking about, the things that are in our hearts that displease God. You know, the what I was talking about yesterday in my prayer, uh, last night, asking the Lord to circumcise our hearts. Uh, if you haven't um, listened to that, um, I'd encourage you to to agree with that prayer and come to agree with that praise the lord amen and to continue to pray not just for yourselves but for the whole body of christ that the lord will circumcise all of our hearts me you everyone on this platform on this community that they will and throughout the body of christ all of us the whole body of christ that the lord would circumcise our hearts um, from that which you know from all the 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 unforgiveness the bitterness the the junk that needs to go and so praise the lord let's pray i was praying but i just wanted to say that because in case someone didn't hear the prayer from yesterday thank you jesus we praise and love you lord and we praise and lift up your holy name and thank you jesus for your word thank you lord that you are already at work in our hearts thank you that you already are circumcised in our hearts from all the things lord that are not of you in our hearts lord you say, Lord, the human heart is desperately wicked, that we need your intervention, Lord, your hand, your touch, the circumcision of the heart by your Holy Spirit, Lord, to be cleansed, to be transformed, to be aligned with you, Lord. Because we can't be holy, we can't do anything, we can't live a separated life for you and do anything uh, without you, Lord. And without you, we refuse to go and do anything. And we just say, without you, Lord, we can't do anything. You say, Lord, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing, Lord. We press in lean in to you come to you lord now right now lord come to you right now we come to you right now we lean in we press in to you lord our source the one who covers himself with light as with a garment the one lord you who is peace himself the one who spoke the world into existence lord you the one the way the one, Lord, capital O, Lord, the way, 
and the truth and the life, the body of Christ. Lord God, we come to you. We are yours. Everyone on this platform, Lord, this platform is for the body of Christ, for your sons and daughters, for the brothers and sisters, Lord God, those that want to know you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, those that connect to this platform and that are connecting to this prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray this. Thank you, Lord. On those who are on this platform for the good, those who um, pray and agree um, and pray for this platform, those on it for the good, Lord, those ones who know who they are, those who are truly yours, those who pray good prayers, those who pray and speak things that are building up and a blessing over this platform, over myself, over my family. And those who um, are on this in this community, Lord God, our Father, bless their sweethearts, those who connect to this uh, platform for the good, Lord. And I say that because there are people that don't do that, Lord. So I want to specifically say that, Lord, because I know, I know that there are people that don't do good and that sometimes will do the opposite of good um, concerning... Um, what I'm talking about, Lord, uh, in in prayers, Lord. So I just pray, Lord, for those, um, Lord, those ones, Lord God, that um, are, are truly yours, Lord, who are have good in their hearts and speak good things. Bless them. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ upon them and the children, the ministries. Let there be release, Lord God. Let there be breakthrough lord god bless their way bless the work of their hands bless them more of you for them i pray for more lord god of you for them let your holy fire lord god our father continually continually more and more and more hit them more and more and more lord that they will grow and go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory for your name's sake, to the glory of your name, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Bless their way. Thank you, Father. Protect them, Lord God. We cancel the agendas of the enemy against them. We cancel accidents in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the, for the world, for the forgiveness of all sin. Thank you, Jesus. Abba Father, we thank you that you hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord. You said the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Thank you, Lord. Touched hearts, Lord God. Thank you for circumcising our hearts, Lord God, from unforgiveness, from uh, pride, from everything that's not of you, everything that's contrary to you. Lord, thank you for circumcising our hearts from those things now, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Let there be um, such a mighty touch in the hearts of those that are watching right now. And me and all of us, Lord, we need it. We need you more and more and more. We need you to intercept, Lord God. We need you to intervene. We need you to touch our hearts, Lord God. Take out hard hearts and put in flesh ones. Take out hard hearts, Father in flesh ones lord in the body of christ lord god peel peel like an onion by your holy fire circumcise by your holy fire the things that are in the hearts of those lord god watching right now and me that's not of you and in the body of christ lord god throughout the whole world lord all the christians lord touch our hearts that our hearts will be ready help us to prepare our hearts to meet the king you lord and that we'll be ready in our hearts a bride uh, a people sons and daughters without spot or wrinkle lord that you will uh we will receive you lord we'll be ready for you lord our hearts will be ready to receive our king in the name of jesus we pray 
Amen. I pray for healing for those who are mentally and physically unwell. Lord, thank you for healing and touching them now. Thank you, Lord. Those who are truly repentant, those who are truly turning away from the things that are not of you right now, Lord, I pray help them. I pray for mercy for them. Those who are connecting to this prayer, who are turning away, who have realized the error of their ways, who have realized that what they've been doing, Lord, um, living the lives that they live, it does not glorify glorify you lord lord i pray protect them lord god we pray in jesus name help them lord in everything they need help with our lord i pray mercy our lord god lord god our god our king our lord our savior lord i pray for strength help them lord god all those that are praying right now all those that are connecting to this prayer right now turning to you we turn to you we all do that, Lord, every single day, and that we remain at your footstool, holding on to you, Lord, holding on to you, to your feet, and uh, staying there, um, Lord, and going lower and lower and lower and lower, Lord God, at your feet, Abba Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm reminded of what a woman of God was speaking about, of um, how we should go and stay at the footstool of God and go and stay low, go lower and go lower and lower at his footstool and stay there and allow the Lord, just allow God to work on our hearts, stay there and don't move until the Lord has finished. You know, that we go lower in our hearts before the King, staying at his feet in prayer, bowing before God, going lower and going lower still, staying at the footstool of the King, allowing the Lord to wash over us, to to uh, move upon our hearts, moving upon our hearts, move, moving upon our hearts and breaking off everything that's not of him that he will align our hearts with himself again, that he can work in our hearts as we need to be touched. There can be that shift and breakthrough and change. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen.